Good morning. Welcome to Fairport Christian Fellowship. How y'all doing today? Great. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Dad. <laughs> Yeehaw! You know, Father's Day, it's Father's Day today, and I get to do whatever my family tells me to do. <laughs> But let's uh, come and honor our Father today. We have a Father in heaven, and I love that in Matthew chapter 5, 6, 7. uh, It's the uh, Sermon on the Mount, and he says, it's more times in the Bible than just those three chapters, your heavenly Father, or your Father who resides in heaven. Think about that today. He knows what you have need of before you ask. He he gives us good things. He tells us not to worry. So concentrate on that today. When you go outside today and you look at all creation, you know, just lift up your eyes, lift up your hands, lift up your soul to him and say, thank you. Lord, you're a good father. We're going to open up with Psalm 27, verses 4 through 6. David wrote this. His heart, man, was to be in the house of the Lord. It says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above mine enemies around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing unto the Lord. David's heart was to be able to sing, but to able to come into his house. And he said, I'm going to dwell there in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, not just on the Sabbath, all the days of my life to behold his beauty and to inquire in his temple. You know, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm going to go off script here a little bit. Like there's a script here. Uh, maybe you guys remember a song. Maybe you don't. It was by Audio Adrenaline, Big House. <laughs> it's called, Come and Go With Me to My Father's House. Come and Go With Me to My Father's House. It's a big, big house with lots and lots of rooms. It's a big, big table with lots and lots of food. It's a big, big yard where we can play football. It's my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. Let's let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can come into your house today. This place, Lord God, we can focus our mind and our thoughts upon you. We can sing praises to you. We can inquire of you. Lord, it should be our heart's desire to come to our Father's house today, bless your holy name, and to give you thanks and praise for all the good things that you have given to us. So, Lord, I do pray that as we come into this house today, we would sense your presence. We would know that it's a safe place secure place, a place where we don't have to worry about hatred or bitterness or anything like that. We can love one another. Grant that to us today and help us to sing and worship you with all of our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. If you're able to stand and worship with me today, then feel free to do so. can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like 
loved you too. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Your mercy flows like a river wide, and healing comes from your hand.
may be seated. You know what, man? That last song, that was awesome. They were all awesome to me. But you know what I really liked about that last one? What I could hear, you know, I hear in my ears everybody singing. I really enjoyed hearing, I, I heard a lot of men singing. That's awesome. That's great. 
that's wonderful to hear the men. And it is Father's Day, so it's great to have fathers here with us today, men here that are singing and worshiping the Lord. The other thing that we sang, uh, the, th- the second to last song, you know, laying your burdens down. If you come in here today, lay your burdens down before the Lord. It says in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. And that's the part you need to realize today. He cares for you like a good father cares for his children, sons and daughters. He cares for you. So cast You know, if you haven't done that already, cast all of your cares upon him, all your burdens, lay them down before him, and and realize he cares for you today. Now, uh, today is Father's Day. We were supposed to be collecting baby bottles. We've been doing that for caring choices since Mother's Day. If you've forgotten your baby bottle like I did, you can bring it next week. Becky's not here today to collect them anyhow. Becky's not doing so good. She's got a sore throat. So we're going to pray for her in a few minutes. Uh, But we miss her, don't we? She's a gift to this church. And uh, so she'll be here to collect next week, okay? So don't forget them next week. I will remind you, ladies, that next Saturday there will be a woman's Bible study here at 10 a.m., and uh, you guys will enjoy that together. And I, I want you men to pay attention. The one you usually come here for a men's day, and we usually do it the first Saturday of the month. But that's July Fourth weekend, so I'm going to push it to July the ninth. Okay, so just mark that. Okay, July the ninth. Let's let's pray. Father, we thank you today again that you are a good father. Man, oh man, Lord God, that's that's the title that you like most of all. Yes, you are great and awesome, the mighty God, God Almighty. We could go on with all kinds of names for our God today, but the best one is that you are a loving and heavenly Father. You're a good Father. Some of us have a tough time with that word Father, but Lord, we re- need to realize you're the best. And uh, Lord, as I said earlier, I I pray that it would be in our hearts all the day long that when we see the wonders of your creation or we review the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord, we would just raise our eyes and our hands and our souls to you and give thanks to you. You are worthy to be praised today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12 today, and uh, we will pick up where we left off. Last week, we traveled all the way through verse 1 of Genesis 12, and we will back up and kind of take a running start from from verse 1, but we're going to concentrate on verses 2 and 3 for a portion today, and then we're going to go on a little bit more. I was prepared to do the whole chapter But, you know, you you guys know, I I hope you know, uh, you pray for me, don't you? And and one of the things that I have to be aware of is the Lord stops me and says, no, I want you to concentrate on something here. I want you to take your time with this. So I'm willing to do that today. There's a, a, the second part of the message is the probably more important part. It's all important, but the second part. So stay awake. Genesis 12, 1, you'll remember. It says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So we see, you guys know, we've been going through Genesis. We got through Genesis 11. 
I told you back then there was two paths to go, the way of the world or the way that leads to Jesus Christ, and we've gotten specific here. God says it starts with this man, Abram. This man, Abram, through his descendants, all of his descendants, lead to Jesus Christ. And in Jesus Christ, all the nations of the world will be blessed and are blessed even today. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And through Abram, it leads to this. This is God's plan, not man's plan. This is God's plan. I'm going to start with one man. And he was such a great man that God picked, right? No. He was an idol worshiper. He was an idol maker. God chose him. I'm going to start with him. That should make you feel great. Really. Because he chooses us, not because we're so wonderful. We are in good company. Uh, he chooses fishermen that fail. You know, he chooses tax gatherers. He chooses sinners. <laughs> yes. And so there was hope for all of us. But he chose Abram and he gave him those instructions. Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. And we reviewed that last week. If you were not here, you didn't catch that you can go back to the YouTube channel and find that message, okay? But it goes on today, and God says to this man, Abram, I will make you a great nation. God promised to make a nation from Abram. He will have children and grandchildren and further descendants enough to make a a nation. And you know how that will happen. It progresses through Genesis and then to Exodus where they end up in Egypt. And in Egypt they grow. The 12 tribes of Israel grow to millions. He grows a nation out of this man. He said, but that, that's what his promise was. I'm going to make a great nation from you. And then he says, I'm going to make your name great. Abraham, his, his name is going to be changed to Abraham. I think uh, Abram means father. Abraham, father of many. At this point in time, it doesn't look like he's the father of any. And he's, you're going to find out 75 years old and he's not the father of any. And so... How does this promise roll out? How is it possible? Well, when God says something, he, he can do anything, can he? Do you believe that today? Is he able to do anything? Yes, he is. I like to hear that. But there is probably no other name in history of man that is honored more than the name of Abraham. He is honored by Jews. He is honored by Muslims. And he is honored by Christians, known worldwide. So what God says is going to happen, that is what's going to happen. I'm going to make you a great name. And it says also in verse 2, I will bless you. I like that, don't you, Grace? <laughs> you like when I looked right at you and said, I will bless you. No, I'm not going to bless you. He's going to bless you. I will bless you, and you shall be a blessing. I, God says, I'm going to bless you, and you're going to be a blessing to others. That's a little message for us, too. God blesses us, and we are to bless others with that blessing. And that also shows you the, the vision that God has. It is not just for Abram but it is actually for the entire world. I want to bless everyone. And through you, the blessing will come. And I want you today, 
that are here listening to own this. We see it's written here towards Abram. God says this to Abram. But I believe he says it to us today too. I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. You need to take this up and own this today. I will bless you. God says, I will bless you. Well, pastor, really? Where does it say that? How about Galatians 3, 9? Galatians 3, 9. There it is. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. That's New Testament, Galatians. Paul is telling us all about those who believe, have faith, like Abraham had faith and it was accounted to him as righteousness. And we have faith today. Have you believed today? What have you believed in today? You have believed in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And because of that, as Paul says, then those, that's you, who are of faith, that's you, are blessed. That's our scripture today, with believing Abraham. So I want you to own that statement today that God makes. I will bless you, and you shall be a blessing. Anybody want to be blessed today by the Lord? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody here unqualif feel unqualified to receive a blessing today? Anybody here feel unqualified to receive a blessing today? Really? I want you to know the grace of God, okay? The, gra the grace of God says it's unmerited favor. You cannot earn a blessing, okay? He gives it freely. Everybody in this room is eligible for a blessing today. No matter what kind of week you had, no matter what kind of failures you may have had, no matter what kind of successes you might have had, maybe you said today, I'm really, I did really good this week. I deserve a blessing. That's not grace. Most likely it's on the other side of it. I, did, I failed a few times this week. I don't deserve a blessing. That's not grace. We're all eligible for a blessing today. And I want you to own that blessing. I, the Lord says, I want to bless you. Bless me indeed. Is what Jabez said, right? He goes on in verse 3 and says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This is, the, this is a promise. This is a great promise that continues today. Abram and his descendants became the nation of Israel. And God says this about the nation of Israel. I'm going to bless those who bless you, Israel. And I'm going to curse those who curse you, Israel. Is Israel a nation today? Yes, it is. 1948, they were brought back into the land, and they've been growing ever since, and just what God promised he said he was going to do in the book of Jeremiah, in the book of Ezekiel, I'm going to bring them from all four corners of the earth, and I'm going to bring them back to their land. It's miraculous. We live in an amazing time. The nation of Israel is a nation today. And the center of things going on is the nation of Israel. The world, all the nations of the world need to be looking towards Israel. You should be realizing what's going on in Israel today. And just so I can tell you, to get you to be ready for what's coming, I want to tell you something. Israel signed a deal this week with the European Union. 
the European Union is going to buy their natural gas from Israel. From Israel this next coming winter. Instead of Russia. Instead of Russia. What does that mean? Russian, Russia is not going to be happy. So you may know what Ezekiel 38 says. That could be what we call the hook in the jaw. And if that's the case, we're close to something, and you need to be ready. And you need to be alert. We're going to talk more about this this coming Friday, so come. But he says this, I'm going to bless those who bless you, and I'm going to curse those who curse you, Abram. The nation of Israel. I'm going to bless, I'm going to bless those who bless you. That's us, the United States. Are we blessed? Are we a blessed nation? Do we have so many blessings? Yes. Yes, we have so many blessings. And one of the reasons is that we have supported Israel. Is there going to be a day when that goes off, but we don't do that anymore? It sure seems that way. And then you got to watch out. Anti-Semitism is alive and well today. There are groups that are boycotting all the products that come from Israel. For what reason? They hate the Jews. They hate Israel. That's satanic. That's demonic. Okay? There are nations who just say, I want to, we just want to wipe them off the face of the earth. Is that going to happen? God says, I'm going to curse those who curse you. This is a matter of history. When the Greeks overran Palestine and desecrated the altar in the Jewish temple, they were soon conquered by Rome. When Rome killed Paul and many others and destroyed Jerusalem under Titus, Rome soon fell. Spain was reduced to a fifth-rate nation after the Inquisition against the Jews. Hitler's Germany was defeated after it persecuted the Jews. Britain lost her empire when she broke her faith with Israel. Anti-Semitism is still here and growing. Hatred for the Jews is satanic. But we are blessed. Well, I don't know what our government's going to do, but I know what I'm going to promote. Pray for Israel. Keep your eyes on Israel. Bless Israel. Bless, because it comes from Abram. And as I said, Israel was miraculously brought back to her land and became a nation again in May of 1948. We are in, currently, the time of the Gentiles, it's called in the Bible. But that time of the Gentiles, I believe, is going to end with the rapture of the church when we are taken out of here, possibly very soon. And God will turn his full attention towards Israel. He he, he, he has never forsaken them, never. Never. But he's going to turn his full attention to Israel. It says in these verses here, the last part of verse 3, In you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. All the families, that's all the nations of the earth, will be blessed through Abram. It's important for us to see that. Again, on the wall, Galatians 3, 8, Paul tells us in the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. How is that to happen? As I said already, and you can follow it along, Abram, Isaac, 
Jacob turns into the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob's name is changed to Israel. They are brought up as a nation in the land of Egypt and brought back to the promised land. This is historic. And then the generations continue. And where does it end up? It ends up at Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. That's how all the nations of the world can be blessed. That's how all the Gentiles can be blessed. And it's by faith. And it's by believing. Abraham leads to Jesus Christ. You know this. But that's how all nations can be blessed. Is it just Americans? Is it just Jews? Is it just, you know, uh, you know uh, democracy, democracy, you know, Republicans or whatever, you know? It doesn't have anything to do with government. It only has to do with believing and having faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what we see in the next verse on the wall, Revelation 5, 9. We're, th this hasn't happened yet, but I believe we're going to be there to see this happening in heaven as those seven years are about to roll out, the seven years of tribu tribulation for the the Jewish people and the rest of the world, I believe that we're going to be in this scene where a scroll is brought forward and it's sealed, but no one is found worthy to open the seals. Oh, but one was found. The Lamb of God. Who is the Lamb of God? Jesus Christ. And it says in verse 9 of Revelation 5, they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. What does it say next? Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And if we want to talk about diversity, heaven is going to be diversity. It's going to be so, di I mean, I'm looking across you guys. You're all different, man. You're all different. And there's going to be even more. I mean, it's going to be so, so much fun. We'll be able to understand one another. I'll be able to talk with somebody who grew up in Brazil or whatever, wherever. We'll be able to relate our experiences. It's going to be so diverse. It's, it's awesome. But he's, God's vision is not just for Abram or for the nation of Israel. It's for the entire world. We know this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life, eternal life. <laughs> Abram. In you, all the nations shall be blessed. And it's through Jesus Christ. Genesis 12, 4 through 9. We'll, we'll go through these verses now. And this is the second part. This is, this is an important thing for you. I want you to see this. This is where the Lord stopped me as I was studying through this and I had already prepared most of it I, into the the rest of the chapter but he stopped me and he said he showed me a certain phrase and that is the title of the message an altar to the Lord it says in verse 4 so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him and a lot went with him and Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran remember they started out in Haran they they le he left his land but he didn't go all the way. And he had his family with him, his father, Terah, his name means delay. He died, and then they moved on to where he was supposed to be. So it says here, Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. 
Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Moreh, and the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. How many descendants did Abram have at that time? None. How old was he? Can you reconcile that? 75, no descendants, but God said, I'm going to give your descendants all this land. (laughs) You know, things that God says to you don't always make sense. Okay? The Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants I will give this land, and there he built an altar to the Lord. There is the title, an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. So he is now where he's supposed to be. He's left his his home, And he's gotten to the place where God wants him to be. It's very important that you see that and you understand what's coming next week. But that's next week. He is finally in the place. Has he left his family? No. Lot is with him. And we're going to see that Lot, well, he's, he's not really a big help to Abram. Okay, well, that's why God said sometimes you got to separate from your family. But the things that I want you to see here, he goes to a place of Shechem, just so you know what where Shechem is. It is the place of where later on there's going to be a well there. Okay, later on in with Jacob, his grandson is his grandson is going to come back and he's gonna go instead of going to Bethel he goes to Shechem and where does he what does he find their trouble you know going that's next week I'm sorry going the wrong way that's next week let me save that for next week to be continued yes Shechem but you know you know there's a there's a well in Shechem it's called Jacob's well Do you know anything about Jacob's well in the New Testament? John 4? Well, that tells us a lot, John. (laughs) The woman at the well. And she is a Samaritan woman. Uh, Not Jewish. A Samaritan woman. Jesus makes his way to a woman at the well. That's in Shechem. And what happens there? A revival that starts with one woman but turns into a whole village. That's what I'm praying for here. We sang that song today. All who are thirsty, come to the well. Come to the well. Jesus is the water. He's the living water. But I digress. He goes to this place called Shechem. And then in verse 7, the Lord appeared to Abram. And he gives him this promise, to your descendants I will give this land. And what does he do? He builds an altar to the Lord. And we see it also in verse 8, as he moved his tent to another place. What does he do there? He builds an altar to the Lord. Everywhere Abram goes, he builds an altar. He does not build a house and stay there permanently in one certain place. He's moving around. He's taking his tent with him. I'm sure it was a a nice tent. But he moved his tent. His tent represents his relationship to this world. It's temporary. It's temporary. His altar that he built represents his permanent relationship up towards heaven. He builds an altar wherever 
he goes. An altar is a place of sacrifice where animals' blood was offered for the atonement of sin. Do you guys do that? Do you have to do that? No, why? He's the Lamb of God. He was slain once for all. And we don't have to worry about atoning, for, but, but we do need to have an altar. The, the blood has already been spilt for us on our behalf. That does not end the relationship. That we, It begins the relationship. We are forgiven. Didn't we sing about that today? Being forgiven? Yes. It's a place where man finds mercy and forgiveness and life. Abram built an altar and he called on the name of the Lord. You know, I go back to that well in Shechem, John chapter 4, with that Samaritan woman. They had a discussion about worship and stuff. Jesus basically said to her, an hour is coming, true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And the Father is seeking such to worship Him. And He's still doing that today. It's not a location. It's not a location. It's not a place. It doesn't matter where Abram goes. He builds an altar to a, in a different place, right? God wants us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Where can you do that? Anywhere. Where is your altar? Is it a garden? It can be a garden. Is it a path that you like to walk? Is it outside somewhere? Is it sitting at a table? Do you have a certain favorite chair? It can be anywhere. And when I travel, when I go visit my daughter in North Carolina, it's not my living room. It's not my kitchen. It's not my table where I'm used to. Does my altar go with me? Did I leave it home? I take it with me. He goes with me everywhere I go. He built an altar. Do you have an altar? Do you have a place where you worship the Lord? Is it from your heart? That's where it's coming to build that altar. Probably the most, the bestest, is that a word, bestest? Did you get the idea? Probably the bestest thing that I was ever taught early on as a Christian by my first pastor was get up early and get with the Lord. Now, I don't know what early is to you. The early could be two in the afternoon for some of you. That's okay. But let the be the first thing that you do when you wake up. Get with the Lord. Read his word. Actually, I'm telling you, you're young. This is when you develop this habit. Okay? This is when you de develop it right now. You can develop it at any time. Abraham, it seems, begins this when he's in his 60s or 70s. So you can begin it, but please do. Build an altar to the Lord every day. And wherever you go, take that with you. Exodus 33, 7. This is hundreds of years later. And I love this. I look at this constantly. It says, Moses took his tent and he pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. Moses is now leading the nation of Israel, which is at least two million people strong in the wilderness. And they had an encampment. 
that's a big camping spot. Two million. How many here have ever been in a crowd of two million? One million? Hundred thousand. I I used to go to football games at Rich Stadium. There was eighty two thousand people that at that time. That's the most I've ever seen. Multiply that by twenty or thirty. Wow. Where are you gonna find a place where there's peace and quiet? I ain't gonna go over to my brother in law's house today and I'm probably gonna see at least five of my grandchildren, maybe ten. Is it gonna be quiet? No. Where was Moses going to find a place where he was going to, you know, get alone with the Lord? He took his tent, he pitched it outside. Sometimes we need to get away from the background noise, and we have a lot of that, don't we? Background noise. All kinds of things that come into our ears, and we can't hear what the Lord is saying. He pitched it outside the camp, and it says, far from the camp. You get the idea. He called it the tabernacle of meeting. Was it just for him? No, what does it say here? Everyone who sought the Lord. Is that you guys today? Seeking the Lord? About anything? Man, we have big decisions in life to make sometimes. Sometimes there's long periods of time where we're not making any big decisions, but we're making little choices every day, right? We should still keep this up. But then there comes a time where it just seems, man, I need to seek the Lord about this. I got to figure out what, what's going on. What's, what's going to be my future? What's happening next week, next month, next year? I need a plan. Go seek the Lord. You've got to have an altar. You've got to have a place, and you've got to develop that habit of being with the Lord and being able to hear His voice through all the background noise and all the distractions. And sometimes that distraction is a television set. The remote. You know, when I was a kid, I was trying to tell my granddaughters this yesterday, when I was a kid in the 60s, it was a black and white television. It was three channels, not much choice. What was on after noon or after midnight? A test pattern. <laughs> they can't get that concept. Is when they turn it on, it's like a thousand channels. Turn it off. Get away from that. Pitch your tent far from that, and hear what the Lord has to say. Further on, verse 9 of Exodus 33. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended, that's God's presence, and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And what does it say? And the Lord talked with Moses. Talk, talked at Moses? No, talked with him. Further on, it's going to say he talked with him face to face as a man speaks to his friend. (laughs) Anybody need a friend? What a friend we have in Jesus. I feel like singing that song. You know that song, Bernice, right? What a friend we have in Jesus. You carry everything to God in prayer. Hallelujah. That wasn't in my notes. You might say that was the Holy Spirit. When you get alone with the Lord, His presence descends upon you. And the Lord wants to talk with you. He knows your name. 
it's going to say, read this chapter on your own today, please. From, from verse 7 on to the end and into 34 too. It's going to say that Moses found grace in God's sight. And he knew him by name. And he says the same thing to you today. I know you by name and you have found grace in my sight. I love that. And the Lord talked with Moses. We're going to see it in Genesis 17 someday when we get there. Abram's going to bow his head and is, is going to say the Lord talked with Abram. And I like to, you know, just put my name under that. And God talked with Danny. Put your name there. So you got to have that altar. Psalm 55, verses 16 and 17, David wrote this. Remember, that's how we started the service today. One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. My wife's looking at me confused because that's not what's up there. David's heart was the presence of the Lord. As for me, I will call upon God. And the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon I will pray. And cry aloud. Sometimes you feel like crying out, out, out loud, right? Yeah. Sometimes you're like Hannah in bitterness of soul. And you, you don't even cry out. You whisper. They, you, you're not even making, and you're just moving your lips. Somebody off to the side might think you're crazy, but the Lord hears you because you're pouring out your soul. I will cry aloud, and He shall hear my voice. God hears. Psalm 91, verses 14 through 16. It's a great psalm. The whole thing. I'll recommend that you read the whole thing today. But this is the end of it. God is speaking here. Because he has set his love upon me, Abram, David, you, therefore I will deliver him. Anybody need deliverance today? I will set him on high. Just like we started out, put him on a rock. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Anybody in trouble or feel troubled today? What's the promise? I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him. And show him my salvation. God promises. And who is the way to salvation? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Matthew 6, 6. I alluded to this earlier and we started the service today. Matthew 6, mostly in Matthew 6, some in Matthew 5, some in Matthew 7. It, It talks about Jesus talks about your father in heaven what's what's today father's day your heavenly father your father in heaven read all those references today i've given you a lot to read it won't take you long but read of all those references to the father it says things like <laughs> you know Uh, He knows what you're going to ask before you ask it. He knows that you have need of all these things. Do you have any need of things today? He knows. Read those things. But in Matthew 6, 6, it says, But you, when you pray, go into your room. Have you built your altar? Is it a room? 
Go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father. Is He your Father? Who is in the secret place, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. An encouragement from Jesus that we ought to be And it's a great privilege that you have to be able to build an altar and pray to the Lord. It's a great privilege. A wonderful privilege that we have that we can access the throne room of God Almighty and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I'm going to finish. I'm going to go off the script again. This is not on the wall at all. But I'm going to read to you from Luke 15. It's a great chapter. Should I say it? They're all great chapters. But should I say this? Get a chance to read it today? The whole thing? I'm just going to read to you verses 21 through 24. And the whole chapter is great, but you know, you've ever heard of the prodigal son? Who spent all his father's, what his father gave to him. Where did he find himself? In a pig pen. What happened when he was in the pig pen? He came to himself. Sometimes we have to be, we have to go to the pig pen before we come to ourselves and realize. What did he say when he was in that pig pen? I'm going to rise. I'm going to go to my father. I'm going to say, Dad, I am no longer worthy to be called by your name. Make me one of your servants. But this is not really about the prodigal son. This is about the loving father. Well, it said, well, I'm going to back up and read verse 20. And he rose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him. And had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. You know, a lot of fathers these days, after their sons spent all their money, they wouldn't feel like this father does, does No, but that's this is the heavenly father. This is the picture of our father in heaven today. Today's a day to honor the father in heaven. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. And sometimes you feel that way. I'm I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. What does that have to do with it? Nothing. Jesus died for your sins. But the father, the father would not hear any of it. He didn't even get to finish his speech. But the father said to his servants, what? Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf. I love hamburgers. Prime rib. Bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and what? Be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. And he was lost and is found. Hallelujah is right. That's our father. He loves us. He loves us. His only desire is that we would come home. That we would just come home to Him. How do you come home to Jesus? If you don't know Him as Lord and Savior, all you have to do is say, I believe that you died for my sins. Please forgive me. I know I'm not worthy. And He knows you're not worthy on your own. That's why He gives you a robe. It's His robe of righteousness. His robe of righteousness. He imputes His righteousness to you freely. And there is joy in heaven 
when one sinner comes home. It would be nothing better for the father today to find his sons and his daughters coming home to him. That's the message. Let's all stand and pray. Lord, how did we get here from Abram? Uh, Lord, it's your word. It's your message. It's your spirit. It's 2022, and we are still blessed from believing Abraham today because of Jesus Christ. And we know the heart of our Father, a good Father, a true Father, a wonderful Father, is that his sons and his daughters would come home and he would take care of them as he always would. He would die for them. And we know that that's your heart today. Lord, I pray for anybody that's in this place today who has been off in the wilderness or off the path, estranged from you, that today would be a day that they would come home and start that relationship with you and help us to be like Abram and build an altar to you every single day. No matter where we go, Lord God, you are with us. And we thank you for your wonderful promises today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a great day.